In Canada, maple syrup is a sticky business, but American producers are reaping the benefits of maple control issues happening north of the border. This is the world's largest maple syrup reserve. Inside this Canadian facility outside Montreal is 48 million pounds of syrup, 82,000 barrels filled to the brim with liquid gold. One barrel is worth $1,800. Quebec is responsible for more than 70% of the world's maple syrup, tens of millions of dollars worth. It's produced by people across the province. Oh my, wow. Who ship barrel after barrel to this massive facility. But being part of the industry here isn't all sweet. I fight for my grandson and my granddaughter. I fight for my daughter. This is my baby. This is Nicole Varin. She's one of more than 7,000 maple producers in Quebec. We toured the sugar shack she runs with her husband, Harold. It's been in their family for a century. Oh, I see. Woo, woo, woo. But it's at risk because Nicole is facing years worth of fines because of how she runs her business. It's near a million. A million dollar because you make maple syrup. Is it crazy? You can smoke drugs, but making maple syrup, this is, it's only in Quebec you're going to see this. Quebec is unique. Since the late 80s, their maple syrup industry has been controlled by a special federation. Think OPEC, but instead of big oil, it's big syrup, controlling the gold you pour on your pancakes. And it's all run by this man, Simone Trapanier. Basically, the Federation is stabilizing the entire maple syrup market. So we are like a locomotive of the industry. The Federation of Quebec Maple Syrup Producers, according to Trepanier, helps to level out the mood swings of Mother Nature. The massive reserve they compile means there's always enough syrup to sell, even when the weather doesn't cooperate. But this safety net of stable price and supply and the global marketing the producers also get comes at a cost. There's a production quota. Producers have to sell through the Federation. They can't go out on their own and do bulk deals with stores or chains. Nicole Varan did, and she could end up in jail. I find my customer, okay? Uh, I make everything alone. So uh, why now I have to pay them? Only about 50 producers have rebelled against the system, according to Trepanier. He says they're taking advantage of the thousands who actually support the Federation and follow the rules. Those people are always victim, like I'm a victim. They are basically um, uh, libertarians on the economy. So they, they, want, they want to do their job and they want to profit without respecting any rules. Those Federation rules, though, don't apply across the border. This is the tubing. That gives American maple producers like Roger Brown an edge. His sugar shack in Vermont is less than two hours from the drip, drip drama happening in Quebec. Do American producers get the best of both worlds, the stability, the marketing without the regulations and the fees associated with the Federation? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, in, in a word, uh, you know, we do. You have the bulk of the world's production is supply limited, is controlled by the Federation. And we are outside of that. And so we can add tabs, we can grow as much as we possibly can without consequence almost. So on the, on the supply side, that's a, <laughs> that's a great place to be, right? It is a slow crawl to catch up with the global leader in Maple, but there is some progress stateside. Brown says producers here are a tight-knit group. They share best practices to try and grow. But don't expect a federation anytime soon. Independence, well, it's sort of a thing in America. If someone came into my sugar house and told me how much syrup I could make, that, yeah, I mean, that would be hard, I think, emotionally in some ways. But economically, I, I understand the rationale for it, and I do think it has been, uh, you know, it, it's been a productive thing. 